Hello, I'm Lenny Pinna, and I'm the editor of this newly published book, A Face from Uranus, Correspondence Between Ted Burr and Henry Bellarmine, 1943 to 1945. I hope you've had a chance to see some of my other videos in which I've begun reading the early letters. I'm going to pick up with Ted's second letter to Henry, which tells him his whole life story up to that point. It's a long letter, so I'm going to break it up into segments so that I think you can more fully appreciate and digest it. I will begin with, My father is an engineer on the railroad. He has provided very well for us. He is thrifty and wise. He believes a father's duty is to make his family secure and not to shower noisy affections upon them. He has a love for the soil and now owns a farm on which we do not live. I shall always remember walking across the fields with Dad. He stopped, kneeled, and crumbled a clod of soil in his hand. The wind whipped up a cloud of dirt about us as his eyes swept up over his land up to the sky. I have never felt more close to my father. Our common interests are almost non-existent, and it is as if both are strangers to each other. Any relationship or companionship is wordless between us. My mother is fat from bearing children. The love between my parents is bottomless. Because of the necessary absence of my father because of his work, my mother raised us almost by herself. My sister and myself lean heavily upon her with our problems, and no matter how crushed she is, she rises up to help us with our load and to pray. Five children can inflict much pain upon a mother, and I hope I can someday offer some compensation. Your letter brought a light into her eyes that were fading. Perhaps Ted will finally find the world he has been searching for so long. I love my mother very much. My oldest brother, Lynn, who is now in the army and myself, have exchanged hardly a word for years. We seem to be disgusted with each other by mere appearance and interests. He is athletic and dwells on baseball. Other than this, I know very little about him. Martha comes next. I feel very close to her since we have shared our adventures and thoughts. I was a sister to her through childhood until now when she is a wife and mother. I believe there shall remain a bond between us throughout our lives. After I was born came Mark, who is still in school. All of us like him. My dad and mother because he is a born farmer. Martha and myself because he is good looking, a typical high school student. I want to see him get on in the world and have a better start than myself. I throw open my wardrobe to him because I want him to foster relationships with boys and girls and have a normal, full life. I don't know why I think my clothes will help. A few years later came Jerry. He has a problem for he has a miserable disposition and a temper which we all fear may reap dire consequences in his future. He is fairly intelligent but listless. His relationship with the family is a strained one with frequent outbursts, but he is young. My paternal grandmother now lives with us. She is feeble-minded and is losing her ability of speech. Because her husband is a Marine, my sister and her little son live with us. We all would lay down our very lives for this baby. These are the people who surround me. When I was a child, I was full of the devil. My maternal grandmother lived with us and chose me as her favorite grandchild. I shall never forget brushing her long white hair by the hour as she read her prayer books. She died when I was 11. The story to be continued.